Five months ahead of the federal election, conservative leader Andrew Scheer is revealing his foreign policy ideas. They include a tougher stance on China, joining the ballistic missile defense program with the United States. Canada has refused to do that for generations. Moving the Canadian embassy in Israel to Jerusalem. It has not escaped notice that all these are closely aligned to Donald Trump's policies. Are these sensible ideas or sucking up to America? Talk about that and lots more. Let's bring back... This scrum, Michelle Zilio from the Globe and Mail, Tony McCharles from the Toronto Star, Craig Oliver from CTV, and our special guest this round is the former director of Canada's spy agency and the former deputy uh, defense minister, Dick Fadden. Great to have everyone back. Uh, Dick Fadden, let me start with you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what do you make of this, uh, Andrew Shear's foreign policy ideas? Uh, and I'll start with ballistic missile defense. A lot of people don't appreciate what that would actually mean. Is that a, an expensive, complicated thing to join? A full ballistic missile defense system for the Americans would be in the billions. They would expect us to spend hundreds of millions. But I think what Mr. Scheer didn't do was talk about the range of possibilities. I mean, we can have anti-missile batteries in Canada, old expression, all the way to writing a check, to having Aegis radars on our ships, to doing more R&D, to putting more people in, um, in NORAD. We can do any of these and still, be, and still be able to say that we're participating in BMD. But I think to be upfront, the Americans will be looking for a substantial financial contribution. Mm -hmm. And this is not, you know, $10 million. This is in the hundreds of millions of dollars. And related to this, that I don't think Mr. Shear talked about, was the need to refurbish, recreate, put in a new northern warning system directed totally against Russia. You put all that in a pot, there's a lot of money there. He didn't and talk about costs of any of that whole right. package. Mm. And that package is a big one. Um, but yes, he is aligning himself, in, in his words, with a more traditional ally, the United States and all of this. But right now, that's actually aligning himself with Donald Trump. And how closely he aligns with Donald Trump is going to be a big target for the liberals in the campaign. They are going to say that Scheer is basically too much of a hawk for Canada, to, and how is he going to pay for it? They'll say he's got austerity written all over him. In, term, in terms of conservative foreign policy, I think the speech last week was pretty predictable. It was very pro-Israel, pro-military, mm -hmm. but we did see, you know, some new ideas on the China front. We're seeing him suggest, you know, taking money away from the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. And, but, you know, he has to think about all these policies and what it's going to actually mean for Canadian right. farmers and businesses. So I don't know how groundbreaking this is, but comparing it to how Mr. Trudeau has ha handled the foreign policy file, especially in recent months, this looked a lot more structured than some of the criticisms the Liberal government has received. Right, well, he didn't have to cost it. He didn't cost it. Um, and this is traditional conservative policy. Cuddle up to the uh, Americans. Strong defense. We've seen that time and time again from, uh, from conservative leaders. Uh, the one thing that's fresh and new and a very serious problem for us is China. And he had nothing really serious to say about what we should do about that. A lot of people are saying now, it's time to get tough with the Chinese. I hear that over and over. And then they, you say to them, and well, tell me how, to, how we're right. going to get tough. Well, what, are you, what are you naming? And they say, well, uh, let's see. I, let me think about it. Well, he but did say, Dick, he said, I, I would say no to uh, Huawei joining the next generation of wireless 5G. That's something that you've talked mm -hmm. about. He talked about, as you say, Michelle, not investing, pulling out the $250 million in that uh, Asian infrastructure bank. That's not what, much. That's yeah, not, not a lot. Not what's not what's your sense of all that? But the bottom line is, I cannot think of a single thing that we can do that will hurt the Chinese enough to have them substantively shift their policies. We can irritate them. We may be able to hurt them. But I mean, we have to be realistic. We're not the United States. And look at the United States, even abstracting Trump for a while, they're having their own problems. Yeah. China is a major power right now, and we're gonna have to learn uh, how to live with them. I don't talk about by-elections a lot. We're always wary about reading too much in, but the Green Party doubled the size of their caucus when they won the by-election in Nanaimo, Ladysmith in British Columbia. It was a seat formerly held by an NDP MP, Sheila Malcolmson. She ended up going provincially now. Welcome Paul Manley to the House of Commons just a couple weeks of work for him. Michelle, let me start with you. The Green Party won. That for, for what does it mean for Jagmeet Singh? What does it mean for the Liberals? What does it mean for that progressive coalition where these votes are getting parked? 
I think it means for the NDP that things are really not looking good. One of their leading candidates, Sven Robinson, came out and said this is a warning, you know, for, for things in October when we're going to head to the polls. And Mr. Trudeau said it himself. This vote demonstrates that Canadians care about the environment. He was almost delivering his own bad news and commenting yeah. that because commenting that because they perform so poorly in that riding. And I think we're going to see a lot of those really young, progressive voters who maybe voted liberal but are very interested in environmental policy start shifting towards the Greens this I, fall. I think what we're really seeing is a collapse of the progressive vote, of the vote of left of center. Uh, increasingly and everywhere we're seeing the Liberals run badly or run last and we're watching Green votes increase. And one of the psychological sides of this is that it looks as if it may no longer be a wasted vote to vote green. You can achieve something by voting green. And, that, and, that's and, and if I were the green leader, I'd be out there saying, if the liberals form a minority, we'll support them. And in if fact, they that's what she's under. saying, isn't she? She's coming out now and saying, you know, you're not throwing away your vote. Right. Vote for greens. You can get green MPs in here. And then we'll look at our minority, the various minority government choices right. we'd be willing to support. But I think what we also will see now as a result of the fact that Mr. Manley's been elected, there's going to be a lot more scrutiny scrutiny on Green Party mm -hmm. candidates. Mm -hmm. Who are these people? There is so far, you know, a, a does this party tack left? Does it tack right? It used to tack right on economic issues. Liz May's tacking left now yeah. on everything. So uh, I think now you're going to see it's going to become a much more fractured contest electorally. Yeah, Can I just throw in the thought, though, that he was elected on Vancouver Island? Yes. Mm -hmm. And Vancouver Island has traditionally been of that ilk, thus Miss May. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't read too, too much in it. If it were a, an election of a Green Party member anywhere else in Canada, I'd put more weight on it. There are a lot of Greens liberals, elected in the rest of Canada now. Liberals but not federally. To, liberals expected to win big, and they're mm -hmm. expecting to in British Columbia. Yeah. They think they're going to run strong yeah. there. Well, that didn't look good. But That's, true. True. That's true. Two names to watch. Jody Wilson-Raybould and Jane Phil Potts. Yes. Yes. Will next, they go green, and right? And in the House of Commons, they're sitting right next yeah, to Yeah, will exactly. they go green? I would say for that by-election, worst news for Jagmeet Singh, because yeah. he was uh, yeah. NDP. Second worst for Justin Trudeau. Trudeau, that vote plummeted. For Andrew Scheer, probably the best news outside of for the Green Party, except it shows the environment is in play and for some votes, so we'll find out. Boy, so much going on. Lots, uh, we got to leave it there, though. Dick Fadden, great to see you. Thank Michelle, you. Tonda, and Craig, yeah. always a pleasure.